Cyberpunk 2077 releases on the 19th of November, one of the first decisions you'll have to make in the game might also be one of the toughest. What life path will you choose? There are three backgrounds to pick from when you begin a new game with your character V. Street Kid, Nomad, and Corpo. And each of these life paths offer unique dialogue options, story beats, and insights into cyberpunk lore to help you create your own story within Night City. Not sure which life path to choose from yet or what exactly each one represents? Well, buckle up and let us help you decide. That's what I'm talking about! All right, in and out, bitches! Your life path isn't the be-all and end-all of your experience in Cyberpunk 2077, and you'll still be able to craft your V into whatever kind of hero, or anti-hero, that you want. But your chosen life path does affect some of your relationships, and it does help mould your early motivations, as seen by the different messages each life path gets in the mirror near the start of the game. For Street Kid, it's no future. Maybe venting that character's frustrations that most people who are born, live and die in Night City never truly get a chance to make their mark on the world. For Nomad, it's turn back. Return to the badlands you came from, where at least some neighbours look out for one another and don't get caught up in the tangled web of the city before it threatens to swallow you whole. And for Corpos, the message in the mirror reads, Trust no one. Corpos might hold a great deal of power in Night City, but they'll step over anyone and anything for a chance to grab more of it, so you'd be wise to watch your back. My childhood, I see. Racing my bobber for the first time through the hills. <laughs> oh, and uh, first kiss in the middle of a synth cornfield. Empty desert roads stretching for miles, cozy campfire sing-songs under the stars, and none of the hustle and bustle of a stinky, polluted cityscape count me in. Sure, I'm looking forward to exploring Night City when the time comes, but as a born and bred country boy in real life, the thought of spending 50 plus hours within the clammy confines of a neo-megatropolis sounds just a little bit too claustrophobic to me. Give me some room to rev my engine so I can find thunder down some dusty desert roads in a dangerous drag race. Give me some space to shoot my blunderbuss into the sky without the fear of, I don't know, accidentally hitting a passing rocker boy in their future mullet. And then, once I've got all of that out of my system, then I'll be ready for the grind of the city life. This love of the outdoors isn't the only reason why Nomad has to be my number one choice for my cyberpunk life path, of course, but it is a big one. I love the Mad Max vibe that the wide open desert landscapes shown in the Nomad gameplay give off, and to be honest with you, I'm way more interested in exploring those open vistas than I am yet another grim dark alleyway. I have questions about the Badlands that need answering, like how big are they exactly? See those distant hills? Can I go there? And how long can you spend out there amongst the sand dunes and Californian oil pumps before the pull of the city forces you towards the checkpoint at the border wall to Night City? Basically, I want to learn all about the Nomad community and find out what it takes to survive away from the urban sprawl. So why else do I want to embrace the life of a nomad? Well, it's safe to say that stealth and subtlety aren't really my strong suit, so that pretty much counts out the sneaky street kids or the backstabbing corpos. Yep, you can forget striking from the shadows or whispering lies into competitors' ears, because I'll be striding into Night City with big guns blazing. I aim to be a desert tank, and I'll be tailoring my cyberware upgrades accordingly, so that I can give myself more armour, maximum strength, strength and a proficiency for only the boomiest of boomsticks. When it comes to cars, they too need to come in the same flavour as my playstyle, and that flavour is loud. I'm not looking for sleek, sporty numbers like the Quadra Turbo R or the Rayfield Arendite S9. Oh no, they're for posers. For me, big, chunky muscle cars from the Badlands are a must. Perhaps an old vintage model that's been modified for raw power, like the 1968 Chevy 2 Thornton. Or maybe a souped-up, Mustang-inspired Quadra Type 66. 
Basically, if I absolutely have to leave the Badlands, then it's going to need to be for a very good reason. And I suspect that reason is going to be one that's made me very, very mad indeed. If that's the case, and I'm going in for revenge, then I'm going to want my enemies to know that I'm coming for them. I'm going to want them to fear the roar from my guns and from my engines. And this feels like the only life path in the game that will allow me to do just that. Nomad? More like, yes, lad. No need to worry. I won't be staying long. Didn't answer my question now, did you? I have those reports you asked for. Look, don't pay attention to Ian and his dusty road vest or Aoife when she strolls in here in her street kid kicks. If you know what's good for you, you know that Corpo is the best life path cyberpunk has to offer. From the very start, you're embroiled in deals, betrayals and intrigue of the very upper echelons of Night City, a life to which you will return someday, but until then, it's given you one hell of a glimpse into the core of human nature. Instead of writing on the wall, there's trust no one emblazoned on the mirror for us. Nomads look out for family, street kids look out for the gang, but we Corpos, we look out for ourselves. When people have it all, when their bank accounts are in the dozens of digits, when they live an existence only dreamt of in the streets, they'll do anything to keep that life. And we've already gone head to head with them. And we've survived. After those high stakes that got us climbing the Arasaka corporate ladder, anything done on the streets or out on the dirty roads is mere chump change. What better way to prepare yourself for being a merc like V than knowing how to look out for number one in a world where colleagues with wealth beyond measure can make you disappear with a click of their gold-plated fingers? Up in the skyscraping levels of Night City's Arasaka headquarters, Corpos have seen Night City for what it really is. When it comes down to it, I love the idea of going Corpo because it means from the very start of the game, I already know how much Night City has to offer and I know the lengths people will go to to stay in its favour. Corpo also sounds like it's a life path that puts most emphasis on getting what you want without bringing out your gun or mantis blades. V works in Arasaka Counter Intel, meaning that we're already damn good at finding out people's dirty little secrets or using our intelligence to figure out what's going down. Because corpos know how people think, in boardrooms you can't gun people down like in the streets or out in the desert, the stealth route is practically made for us too. And boy, I love me some stealth. Instead of going in guns blazing, I'm already planning for my V to be the kind of merc who uses subterfuge, persuasion and quiet footsteps to complete her missions. Tackling quests with a sneaky precision and expensive weapons if an alternate strategy becomes viable. Role-playing wise, ruthless cleanups after missions are also worming their way into my cybernetic free brain too. As with Corpos, the less people there are who know about your dodgy dealings, the harder you are to predict. Our Corpo V has been in their fair share of boardroom deals, so, to quote quest design coordinator Philip Weber, we know how to read between the lines and read people when they're trying to do business, which of course can give you many opportunities later on. Sounds like we start off with high charisma. Us Corpos see what people want and using our knowledge of Night City's industries can surmise why they want it. Cyberpunk's tweet about the class reads that you've bent the rules, exploited secrets and weapons weaponized information, which also smacks of silver tongues to me. While other classes get their hands dirty, we can do just as much with a few well-placed words. So if you were ever the kind of person who maxed out charisma in RPGs or loved yourself some stealth assassinations, Corpo is the life path for you, my friend. Now, come on, let's go claw our way back to the top and make all those we've got to step on along the way pay. Well, who do we have here? Forget about lonely deserts and even lonelier luxury penthouses. The neon lights of Night City call to me, and as a street kid, I'll have spent my entire life here. I know the city like the back of my hand. I know the gangs. I know what goes on in the shadows. I know how the world works down here in the gutter. 
So I might not have had a lot of experience in dealing with all-powerful corporations, and I'm completely out of my element in a boardroom or out in the desert, but surely, since the early parts of the game are all about carving out a foothold in the city and learning what it takes to make a name for yourself, knowing the right people and having them already be aware of you in return is gonna help give me a head start. Plus, as we know, the Street Kids story begins with them jacking a car and getting busted, showing that you already have a very healthy distrust of the police force. Of course, that means they'll already know you too and might give you a harder time because of it. So hopefully, we'll be able to call in some favors from friends and fixers on the street. I think what I really like about the idea of playing as a street kid is the potential it has for the story I'll create myself. CD Projekt Red has said that giving players the freedom to play the game the way they want to is at the very core of Cyberpunk 2077. But at the same time, the three origin stories are about giving you that little bit of extra flavor and foundation on how you choose to navigate Night City on your own terms. According to Cyberpunk 2077's lead story writer Tomasz Marhevka, the Street Kid storyline is his favorite one because it's set in a world where things seem to be black or white, but in the end, they all turn out to be just different shades of grey. It's a meaningful story about friendship, loyalty, unavoidable attachment to the place you come from, with a little hint of hope. I like the idea of starting the game as a hardened cynic, believing the worst in everyone you meet and playing very cautiously, and dare I say sneakily, because of that. But. Over time, you find that even in the darkest places, there's always a path leading up and out. Also, your partner Jackie is a constant in all three life path choices in Cyberpunk 2077. But how you know Jackie changes depending on where you've come from. He's a longtime friend of V if you're a corpo, but I really like the idea that your very first interaction with him as a street kid is him pulling a gun on you. Very fitting for Night City especially since you're destined to be great friends. And I like the idea of the V that I'll be. I've got connections, street cred, and street smarts to spare, as I'll have already seen and most likely done some pretty shady stuff. My V will be resourceful, occasionally empathetic, especially to those struggling to make the best of a bad situation, and most importantly, ambitious. I like to think that even though my street kid V is a cynic, they're a survivor and will never give up without a fight. I'll be role-playing as a V who is incredibly charismatic, extremely gifted at talking their way out of trouble. Because from experience, who you know and what you know about them goes a long way. My V's life has been tough, but it's certainly prepared them for the adventure to come. So, those are our choices for the life paths we'll be treading once we get started in Cyberpunk 2077 when it launches in just a few months' time. But which one will you be picking and why? Are you going to play as an ousted corpo on a path of vengeance, climbing your way up to become a terrifying gang warlord, reveling in all the chaos and destruction in your wake? Will you play the part of an outsider nomad, pulled in by the bright lights of Night City and trapped between loyalty to your family and the need to do what's right? Or are you a wily street kid, hungry for recognition and enough money to pull yourself out from the bottom of the food chain? Whichever of these three paths you choose, one thing is for certain. We're all in for a wild ride. Make sure and subscribe to Eurogamer for more Cyberpunk 2077 content coming very soon, as well as a brand new gaming video every day. And we'll see you very soon in Night City. Goodbye. V, my man, you made it. You blowing up all over the news.